hello and welcome to my thoughts on Eden's Gate Savage. In this video I will be discussing how I feel about this way tier, what went right and what went wrong. I will also be comparing this tier to past raid tiers, creator to Alphascape mainly, with most of the focus being towards Deltascape since that was the first raid tier last expansion and I feel it's the fairest comparison between the two expansions. My point in view is an experience is with melee DPS, Dragoon specifically, due to this my opinions will be biased towards a melee's experience and as such healers, tanks and even ranged DPS will have different feelings about a fight's difficulty or design. Having said that, I'm not completely ignorant of the trials and tribulations these roles have to face in these fights and I will bring up any noteworthy points when necessary, granted I have the knowledge to do so. After my thoughts on each fight, I will also be taking a look at the new loot system. It's been a bit of a controversial change and I have points to bring up that people often forget when they talk about it. If none of this interests you or you want to go to a certain topic, uh, there will be timestamps in the description and I will put them on the video right here now. Without further ado, let's get into my thoughts on Eden's Gate Resurrection. Right off the bat, I want to say this is probably the best first boss we've ever had. It's not too complicated, but it's also not a complete pushover like Alderoid was back in Delta's game. I would say it's slightly tougher than Chaos in difficulty. Most of the first 40% of this fight is very familiar to normal mode, however there is one entirely new mechanic, while the dimensional shift mechanic has been altered significantly. The new mechanic is a simple bleed that must be past the tanks, nothing crazy, but I like the addition. Dimensional shift is almost completely different, there are two versions throughout the fight and both work pretty well. The first version is done really well for being so simple in design, there are so many different strategies your group can use to get through it, I'm a big fan of mechanics with multiple solutions, even if there's only one or two that are optimal. This is very similar to Chaos's Dark Orb phase, which also had multiple solutions, and it's a good direction for future raids. The second version is much less diverse, but it is a good example of a mechanic which rewards your memory skills. Players who remember how the first dimensional shift works and how the rotating me mechanic works in previous fights, such as Gimla Dark, will have an easy time learning this. A lot of Savage is built upon past mechanics, but I think it's the ones that use elements of the old instead of copying it directly that work the best. An example of one that doesn't follow this would be Flamethrower in 011 Savage back in Alpha State. One thing worth mentioning is that this fight is currently the only raid to use this interrupt feature that was added in Shadowbringers. I'm sure they'll ramp up that usage in future tiers, so get ready tanks and ranged DPS you're going to have some more responsibility. The damage output taken and what is needed to clear this fight is in a perfect spot, maybe a little bit too high depending on your HP for the gravity mechanic but uh, we'll see how that plays out. It's not too high that only the most skilled would take it out but it's not as low as some pass rates such as a game Alter Roy. As stated before, this fight is probably the most well designed first fight in years and I'm glad Square learned from the mistakes of Alter Roy and the strengths of Chaos. Voidwalker is a pretty fun fight for the most part and honestly I'm enjoying it more each week but we'll get to that reason soon. This fight isn't too crazy but for the past three raid tiers the second fights have been um, not very good to say the least. So this is a refreshing change of pace. The time mechanics seem unique to begin with, but they're pretty similar to Kefka's Savage's memorization, but I don't see people mention that often. In this fight, you can always see what spell you have, but if you don't remember the timings, you can communicate with who does have the spells to see when they'll execute, which is very useful for healing. The addition of an extra Doom Void move is pretty cool, Doom Void Cleaver, it makes you pay attention to the hitboxes of the cleaves. Observing players will realise the cleave isn't very big, allowing you to hug another member for extra ghost space, which is very useful towards the end. You won't see that in this video very often because we had just started the fight. A small part that works well, but I don't think is super mentionable, is the Hellwind mechanic, during the second spell in waitings, particularly. 
It's not a mind-blowing or crazy, but the extra force attention is a good little skill to learn for future fights in general. In fact, this fight is designed to teach you that not everything is set in stone. This is a good skill to learn for new raiders. And what I mean by that is, everybody will get a mechanic, but they won't always get the exact same mechanic. For example, you might get flare at one point, or you might not get flare and you might get the eye mechanic. You gotta remember and see what everyone does. Now we get to the last mechanic, the quietest spam. I'll be honest, this is one of the two mechanics in this whole raid tier that I pretty much hate. All they did was spam a bunch of shit at the last second to make the last 15-20% of the fight just a dodge fest, with horrible latency issues because of the goddamn hitbox of the ghosts. I could tell you these next hitboxes are not lenient at all. However, groups with good gear and skill will find that they can actually kill the Voidwalker before or around the first psycho mechanic. So that's the reason why I find this fight better each week because slowly but slowly we're killing it before we have to do more of that mechanic. You may have noticed that I didn't compare this fight to other fights too much and that's because I think it's pretty unique in its own right aside from the Kefka Savage thing which is even more impressive because it also takes stuff from other fights such as Sophia, Neo XF, Fagal and so many more. In that regard I give it extra props. The next fight I do have some comparisons to make, especially in its structure, so let's get into it. Leviathan is probably my favourite fight this tier. Despite being the most similar to past fights, maybe it's the music or just that Leviathan has always been my favourite summon in the Final Fantasy franchise, except in this game because pretty much every fight that he's in except from this one is pretty bad. But it is my favourite, which I know is weird because a lot of people hate this fight because it's boring and I can definitely understand why, but I think it's fun. So as I alluded to in the previous section, this fight is pretty similar in structure to at least one other fight I remember. Maybe there's more, but this one stands out to me the most. And that's O11S, or Omega. Not to be confused with the other two Omegas, or three Omegas, or how many Omegas were there again? Anyway. The most obvious parallel is Tsunami 1 and 2 compared to Panther Creator 1 and 2. Hell, even Black Smoker uses a move straight from Panther Creator 2, which is the tank laser blasts, which is actually water in Black Smokers, but yeah. Now, I doubt anything visually will beat Panther Creator because those phases are just amazing. They're a crazy barrage of lasers and explosions, and lasers and explosions and explosions and fire and laser, which is awesome. But the whirlpool effect in this is pretty damn cool as well. Maybe it's not one of the most amazing effects, but it's up there. It's up there. Whirlpools are cool. The rage is also pretty similar to O11S. The only difference being that Leviathan takes a while to kill you after the gas finishes, whereas O11 kills you instantly, but takes a few seconds to reset. Which, if you see my O11 clear video, can mean the difference between a clear or a white. So this is the first fight where the arena is more dynamic, and by that I mean it falls apart a bit, and that changes how the arena works. Now, it isn't amazing, it's a little bit tame here and it could be better, but it's a good step stone for the next fight and whatever the future of raids could be. Considering we have not seen too many fights with dynamic arenas, I think we're onto something here. Uh, We'll have to see how SE handles this in the next raid tier. So this fight is good at putting the skills of personal responsibility to the test. It's touched upon in other fights, but in this fight, especially Tsunami 2, players will always have to look at their debuffs and adjust accordingly, which is a lot less static than the previous two fights, and you will wipe the group if you make an error. Uh, E2S, if you don't stand in one of your circles, you'll give everyone the damage, damage down or Something like that. Here, if you don't stand with the stack and they don't heal enough, you're dead. If you don't push people the right way, you're dead. So you gotta do this right. And this is good for teaching people in later fights. And this is the first tier. This is the tier which should be teaching the raiders, so that's good. Overall, Leviathan is a good view of what's to come in the future aside from maybe the omnipositional part of it, but for the most part, I think that this fight does a lot good, 
and a lot less bad. It may not be the greatest fight, and it probably objectively isn't the greatest fight, but I enjoy it. So now we're going to move on to the last fight this tier, and that is Titan himself. Now I have a bit of thoughts for this one, so let's go. Oh yes, now it's time to talk about the most badass Primal Reborn. While we've seen more than enough Titan to last three lifetimes since the weapons reframe, I won't hold that against this fight. I think it's a little bit unfair and I want to judge the fight on its own. And props to this fight, it holds up on its own very well and it feels almost like a completely different Titan for the most part. Even though it does use pretty much every single move from the original boss's moveset. I think there might be one he doesn't use though. But oh well. Once again, the music is awesome. And the first time I got to phase 3, I was like, holy shit, this the primal version of Underweight from the ultimate fight is just amazing. My favourite version of that song. Hearing it during the finale of this fight was mind-blowing. Well, maybe not mind-blowing. But awesome nonetheless. This fight is also the longest single savage fight we've had. Maybe ever? Clocking it in a time of 1330, give or take 10 or so seconds, since there's some weird instance phenomenon causing Enrage to be faster or slower sometimes. Not really sure how that works. Don't really care because I like to just take the average, which is 1330, but yeah. I could be wrong with this being the longest savage fight, since I know Brute Justice and Bahama Prime and Manipulator were very long fights as well, and I'm not counting, for example, XDEF and Neo XDEF as one fight. No, Neo XDEF is its own fight, XDEF is a different fight. And Neo XDEF is like 10 minutes or something like that, I don't remember, but it's not 30 minutes, 30 seconds, that's what I know for sure. Although this fight is long, it's really not that difficult. Most of the difficulty and optimization comes from the first phase of slightly. Once you're past the first phase, you're pretty much golden. There's mechanics in all the phases, obviously, but they're really, really light compared to phase one and some other savages we've had before, yeah. It's only about four minutes and it's mostly similar to normal mode, aside from one mechanic, which I'm sure we all know what I'm talking about. And this is about the same length as XDF Savage. I'm not really a fan of this. Degrading difficulty is not my favourite type of thing in a fight. However, I give the benefit of this being the first raid tier of the expansion, and I don't really dock it too much because of that. But I do have to say this is probably, when I'm playing with my static at least, my second least favourite Savage's tier. If I'm playing with Pugs, E2 takes that spot, but yeah. Besides the degrading difficulty, Phase 1 is probably the worst part of the fight anyway. Well, debatably. The fault line from the car mode has a really odd hitbox, I'm sure some melees have noticed this, which makes uptime a bit tough. I, as a Dragoon, I have not figured out how to keep uptime, aside from if I have the yellow triangle. And the bomb boulders, which is what everyone probably knows I'm talking about, can be really fast and tight if you do it our weird uptime way, which everybody does anyway. But both of these could be explained by high ping, and neither are impossible to dodge. I've dodged both, I mean everybody dodges the car, but I've dodged the bombs plenty of times, and I'm sure everybody has. Uh, the high ping does make it a little bit tougher, that's just something us Scots have to deal with. So this first phase is probably the reason why I say the DPS check on Titan is one of the tightest we've had since Creator, with Final Omega probably being second place in my opinion. The rest of phase 1 is pretty cool though, even if it's pretty much tight and normal without any AoE markers aside from I think one. Personally, I really like this start, even though I did say it's probably the worst part of the fight. It's honestly really hard to articulate what I mean by this. but. I'm sure if you play it, you'll understand what I mean. So phase 2 is takes the place of our Neo X Death, our final Omega, Kefka Savage, God Kefka, whatever you want to call him. This is it, this is it. It's just in one fight, there's no checkpoint. That's, that's the difference. And I really prefer how this one works. So for the first time, you're fighting what could be considered 
an actual titan. He goes big. He's a fucking titan. Do you know how? So many fights and he's wee small. I mean, he's bigger than you, but he's pretty small. In this fight, he's an actual titan. So, finally, we get an actual titan. The true scale comes when he starts destroying the arena. Goes back to what I said last time. The arena dynamic is just awesome in this fight. The constantly the arena is getting destroyed, revived, raised, lowered. It's probably my favourite fight this thing has even done. As I said in Leviathan, it makes me pretty excited for the future and what new things could be done. Also like Leviathan, this fight takes personal responsibility and pushes it even higher, meaning everyone has to be aware of how the mechanics work and no one, and I mean no one, is getting carried mechanically. If you hit people with a blue, you're probably going to wipe the group. If you stand with a yellow and you're orange, you're probably going to wipe the group. Especially when DPS checks come into the factor. I would like to mention one thing for those with gap closers. If the back platforms are the safe ones for plate fracture, apparently sometimes you could jump off. I know this ain't a guide, but I found it very odd since unlike Leviathan, it isn't so obvious. You make, have to make sure you're in the centre. If you're at the edge and you use Spine Shatter Dive or something, you're going down. And it's fucked me up a couple of times, but you get used to it after a while. So the third phase of this fight is just an epic finale. It's not mechanically intensive, but... Whew, is it healer intensive? A lot of fights are said to be healer fights, and that is true, however... I think this final phase takes the cake. There's just so much going on. You have to make sure your mitigation is on the ball. And that goes for tanks and whoever has mitigation, which is pretty much everyone except for the melees. Although we do have Fane, which you can use there to help a little bit. It makes me glad I didn't end up healing this tier, and trust me, I was so close to healing this tier. First tier I would have healed. Anyway, none of this is to say it's bad, actually quite the opposite, I've stated previously this part of the fight just feels awesome, especially with both titans on the field at once. I think it's amazing, and when the music kicks in it's like, whew. all I can say is, this fight just shows you, it's the life cycle of the titan. Coming soon, voiced by different uh, bro, bye. Coming back to what I said in the intro, I'm going to talk about the EOLS system. I won't go too long about this because it's not super important, but I do think it deserves some discussion. Especially with some things I've seen people say about it. I think I need to throw my hat in the ring here. Right off the bat, I want to say that this new system right, is not any worse to bugs than the old one. It's the exact same. It just feels different. Because the RNG that you have now, with rolling against everyone, was previously the RNG you had with the item even dropping. I mean, I guess in E1 and 2 the item can still not drop, but come on, it drops like every other week anyway, so it's whatever. The only real difference is that before, you were praying to the RNG that your item dropped, and now you're just praying you win it, since it's guaranteed to drop anyway. E1S loot is a little bit of an exception, as I said, but it still evens out because there used to only be 2 loot, but now there's 3, which helps. I guess people will bring up that one person can win everything, which is true, but the same thing could happen in the old loot system as well. For example, two caster accessories could drop, and you're the only caster, therefore you're going to win everything. So I failed to see what the difference is here, maybe someone can point it out. This is something I'm okay discussing in the comments if you wish, but this is my opinion on it and this is how I see it so far, so yeah. In the end, this new system is around about the same as the old system. Yeah, it does work better in statics than pucks, that is undebatable. But that's not to say this loot system is the best Final Fantasy XIV could do. No, I don't like Destiny too much, trust me. I used to play it a lot, but I grew off it because I didn't like the progression and the stale content. But the one thing I will give it that it did right better than anything I've seen in this game is the raid loot system. Maybe other MMOs do the same, but this is my example because it's the only other one I've played in. Don't go tell me it's not an MMO because I don't care. This is my video. Shh. So, what happens is that when you kill a boss, you automatically get loot for yourself. No rolling on anything, nothing. And when you help others, 
they still get loot and you don't. So basically this destroys both the current problems and I'm really not sure why we don't have something like this yet. Like, you can help your friends, the whole zero chest, one chest, two chest thing isn't a fucking thing. You get your loot if you do the fucking fight and you can't just steal everything like you would if two chests was automatically always on. But I don't know why we don't have this, hopefully we do soon. Anyway, as this is a decisive topic, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on the matter. So please, let me know. So in conclusion, this raid tier is probably one of the best first raid tiers we've ever gotten. And I really love Devil Escape. So I hope people can see why, if they haven't done yet. Although I might not have done the best explanations, they might help. The future looks great for Savage and Ultimate. Oh my god. Just can't wait to see what this ultimate's gonna be like, because the last two ultimates were amazing. Even if I never completed them, they were still amazing. So I encourage anyone who doesn't raid to give it a go. This this raid tier is probably one of the best raid tiers to jump in. It's actually got one of the best difficulty curves of every raid tier, which actually they started with Alpha Skate, but this one does it good too. And there is a lot of valuable skills you can learn here, just make sure you don't lie when you join MPF or anything like that, please. Unless you're extremely confident you know what you're doing. So anyway, thank you for listening to my thoughts and many analysis I guess, it's not really an analysis, of Eden's Gate Resurrection. Actually, it's Eden's Gate. Eden's Gate Savage. And make sure you have a great morning, afternoon, even at night. Or whatever you have if you live on Mars. I don't know. So yeah. Thank you. See you later.